Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be chatting about a whole bunch of random stuff that I've been really enjoying lately. Some of it is beauty, some of it is fashion, some of it is more like home decor, and at least one thing is completely and totally random. Now, typically this would be the time that I would be sharing my beauty report series with you guys for the month of March, but uh, quite frankly, March was, uh, it was a weird month. It was not the best, I think we can all agree, and uh, I did not test out a whole lot of new beauty stuff to talk about with you guys. I purchased one, one singular product in the entire month, and I did receive a little bit of PR, it was mostly skincare, and I'm still testing out and kind of like developing my opinions on a lot of those products, so I'm not really ready to talk about them yet. So honestly, there really hasn't been a whole lot of new stuff that I've added to my collection, and as you know from watching my last couple of videos, I really have not been in a mental space where I've been like really excited to try makeup and put makeup on. I've been introverting super hard, I've been crafting and kind of doing a lot more little self-care things. I have been going ham with my skincare, which has been really good, but I just didn't really feel like it made sense for me to film a beauty report video, like a traditional one for March. So instead, I'm just gonna share some random stuff with you guys that I have been really enjoying for the last several months. Now, I will be sure to list and link everything I'm about to share in the description box of this video in case you wanna check anything out. I know that several of these products are from small indie brands that would, I'm sure, appreciate your support so, so much right now, but... I also do not want you guys to feel pressured in the slightest to actually buy any of these things. I know that not everyone right now is in a position of privilege to go ahead and treat themselves. With the way that things are in the world right now, I feel like the priority is definitely not on frivolity, it's on the health and safety of ourselves and the people we love. So if you want to shop any of these things, if it's gonna make you happy and you want to treat it as an act of self-care, cool. If you don't want to buy any of these things and you just want to hang out and hear me talk about them as a fun distraction, also cool. So yeah, with all that being said, I've got a lot of stuff to share with you guys, so let's get into it. So why don't we kick things off today talking about the one product that I actually did go ahead and buy last month, and that is the Zoeva Authentic Skin Foundation. Now I do have a video uh, demoing this on camera. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll link it for you guys up here in the cards so you can see the application and hear my initial thoughts on this product. But honestly guys, the more and more that I use this, the more that I really, really like this foundation. I think it is so, so, so beautiful on the skin. To me, it's like that perfect middle of the road of everything that I want in a foundation. It's like medium to full coverage where your skin still looks like skin, but everything looks flawless. So it's not, you know, a mask of makeup where your entire face is entirely blanked out. Like you can still kind of see imperfections through it, but it has this way of being really, really smoothing on the skin where texture and pores and everything just look visibly reduced. Your skin tone looks evened out. Everything just looks so beautiful and flawless without looking fake. It also has a really nice texture to it where it feels very lightweight. It's not heavy, it's not too emollient, it doesn't make my skin feel itchy and uncomfortable or like it's, you know, suffocating or something. It hasn't caused me any irritation or any kind of breakouts. It's just honestly so lovely and I feel like the price is right. It's $28 for uh, 30 mils or 1.01 .01 fluid ounces, which compared to a lot of like Sephora brand foundations, is really, really good. That being said, there are a few sort of like words of caution or things that you should know before you like run out and buy this. Now, first of all, while this is a long wearing foundation, it is not an oil controlling foundation. The finish on this is satiny, luminous. It's not crazy dewy. Like as a person with oily skin, I definitely can still wear this product and have it look really beautiful on me, but I need to pair it with a mattifying primer. I need to set it with a mattifying setting spray. I need to take a few extra steps to kind of help reduce shine. Otherwise, I feel like I will start to see oils kind of creeping through in my T-zone after like three, four hours. It also does not have the dry down of a matte foundation. So if you are someone that is used to applying a foundation and having it completely set without necessarily needing to powder it, 
that's not the case with this either. You definitely need to go in and set this down with powder because even after it dries down, I feel like it does have just like a slight bit of tackiness to it if you don't set it. So if that's something you don't like, you are gonna wanna go ahead and do those extra steps. But that being said, even on my oily skin, I noticed after a full day's wear, this didn't break apart and start to look gross on me. I did look shiny. I do need to blot when I wear this, but I feel like it holds together really well and after I blot my makeup doesn't look patchy and weird and broken apart and gross. So all in all, big big fan of this. To be perfectly honest, this to me is what I wanted the Bite Beauty foundation to be and it wasn't. Like I know a lot of people really love the new Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation, I think is the whole name of it, but that one really didn't work for me. I felt like it was too heavy on my skin. It ended up making me look really greasy. Like it started out looking beautiful. I feel like if anything, it started out looking very, very similar to the way this looks, but because it's heavier and more emollient, it just ended up breaking down and looking way greasier than this does on me by the end of the day. Also, that has fragrance. As far as I know, this one doesn't. And I feel like the fragrance in that foundation didn't make my skin super happy either. So honestly, I would say if you've been eyeing the Bite Beauty Foundation, but it's a little bit out of your price range, or maybe you tried it and you weren't a super huge fan, this honestly may be the better way to go. And on a related note, I wanna give a little shout out to the e.l.f. Matte Putty Primer and the Cover Effects Mattifying Setting Spray. I've had these now for over a month. I think I picked these guys up back in February sometime, maybe this one in January, I really don't remember. But these are clutch if you have oily skin. These are the products that I've been pairing with the Zoeva Foundation to help it wear longer and to help control shine, and they work so, so well. This matte putty primer, it's only eight bucks. You get so much product in here and the littlest bit goes a long way. I just apply this to my T-zone and it really does help to keep everything nice and matte and like locked in. And then this is the best mattifying setting spray I have ever tried that does not have denatured alcohol in it. It is very hard to find a setting spray that meets those criteria. And this guy right here, man, it's excellent. The mister is really fine. It's not overly aggressive. I definitely feel like it helps my makeup to last longer and to get less shiny throughout the day and zero irritation to the skin. Like all around such a winner. The biggest downside to this guy is that it's expensive. It's like 30 something dollars, I think. I got mine at Ulta with points luckily, so I actually didn't have to spend any money on it at all. But I would 100% continue to buy this in the future. I have a ton of other setting spray to use and I do still like, like the peach one from Too Faced, I like Urban Decay All Nighter, but those ones do have denatured alcohol in them so I don't like to use them every single day. Whereas this, I feel like I can use on a daily basis and I don't have to worry about it. So let's move on to some hair care products. These I've had for months and months and I've been meaning to talk about them don't know why I haven't, because they're kind of amazing. So back at the beginning of the year, I was watching Kaylee Melissa's channel, which if you have not seen her before, she is absolutely adorable. She is a hairstylist and she does all like really cool hair tutorials and reviews of different hair care products and tools on her channel. And she had done a review of the new Kristen S scalp collection, which I will link for you guys in the description box. I would definitely recommend checking it out because it was really cute and also super informative. But I walked away from watching that review being really intrigued because a uh, fun fact, well, kind of gross fact, I tend to struggle with a really dry, flaky scalp in the winter time. I attribute it mostly to the fact that our house has forced air heat and it is so, so dry that my skin gets incredibly dehydrated. Even though I'm oily, your skin can be both oily and dehydrated. So that is what I typically struggle with in the winter months. So I'd been kind of like on the lookout for some products to help, you know, rebalance my scalp. So when I saw her review, immediately my ears perked up and I was like, ooh, wait, tell me more. So after seeing her review, I decided that the two products that were most interesting to me were the scalp scrub and the micellar shampoo. So I went out to my local Target and picked these up and I have to tell you guys, I have not been disappointed. These are the first Kristen S products that I've ever tried. And now I wanna go out and like try everything because these 
are amazing. So first, let's talk about the micellar shampoo. This is genius on so many different levels. First of all, let's talk about the packaging. So this has a like kind of little um, pointed applicator tip. It's like in a squeeze bottle, which as Kaylee said in her video, you, you had to know this was designed by a hairstylist because it's essentially made so that you can squeeze the product directly onto your scalp. And let me tell you guys, I never knew that that's what I needed in a shampoo, but now that I can do that, it's like, so, so nice because you're really getting directly to the scalp and making sure that the product is getting to where you have the most buildup of oils and residue and gunk. Second, micellar technology. Like why have we not thought to put this in a shampoo before? We know how amazing micellar waters are for removing makeup. So using micellar technology in a shampoo to help, um, you know, break down the dirt and oil and gunk from your hair, Seems like a pretty good idea to me. So this honestly does a lovely job of cleaning your hair, but it does not dry it out at all. I'm pretty sure this does not have any um, sulfates in it, which sulfates aren't the devil, but for me personally, having really fine straight hair, I find sulfates can sometimes be a little too harsh. This, however, doesn't strip my hair, it doesn't dry it out, but it gets it really clean and it smells incredible. Everything from this line, I'm trying to like figure out what the scent is. It's like uh, slightly like men's cologne, but not that masculine, like a little bit more feminine. It's like really fresh and like luxurious and expensive smelling, even though I'm pretty sure this is like less than 15 bucks at Target. So this I've been enjoying thoroughly. I feel like it lathers up beautifully. It's very satisfying to use. It cleans my hair well, and it definitely helped to not further strip and dry out my scalp. And then this guy is the Instant Exfoliating Scalp Scrub, which again, genius, because this has another sort of little pointed nozzle so you can directly apply the scalp scrub to your scalp. If you've ever tried to use a scalp scrub that comes in a pot before, or even one that comes in like a regular squeeze tube where you have to squeeze it out in your hand, you'll know that the most frustrating thing about using a scalp scrub is that you can't actually get it on your scalp because it gets stuck in your hair before your fingers can like get the actual scrubby granules to your scalp. So this, you're supposed to be able to like wet your hair and then section it and then basically squeeze the product right along those sections and then massage it in and then completely exfoliate your scalp. And it has um, sugar granules in it as the exfoliating kind of uh, mechanism. So it's not overly abrasive and it will definitely melt down it, as it is exposed to water, so that way it's not gonna end up being too harsh. And the smell is the same as this guy. The whole line has the same scent to it, and it's, ugh, so incredible. So I actually really like this a lot. It is still a little bit difficult to work with. I did still feel like the sugar granules got stuck in my hair. I think that's kind of a thing that's gonna happen with any scalp scrub, but this one was definitely a lot easier to use than most of the other ones that I tried. So very solid recommendation from Kaylee Melissa, very solid launch from Kristen S. I'm really excited to explore and try more from the brand when I can safely peruse the aisles of Target again. So switching gears, let's talk about some fashiony goodness. So I was approached by a brand called Thread Tank maybe about a month or so ago asking if I wanted to try out some of their clothing. So they are an indie apparel brand and their slogan is stories you can wear. They make all of their clothing pieces to order and they all have really cute like funny or inspirational sayings on them that are supposed to help you kind of like express your individual personality. They have all these really cute collections. They have a mom collection. They have one around teachers, pets, coffee, wine, inspiration, like pretty much, you know, a little bit of something for everybody. And the styles just honestly all look super cute and super comfortable. So I was very excited to get to pick out a couple of things for myself to wear and share with you guys. So the first thing that I picked out was one of their slouchy sweatshirts. This one I couldn't resist because I feel like if I had a slogan, it would probably be this, which is first I drink the coffee, then then I do the things, which uh, is, is me 
me in a nutshell. I drink coffee literally every single morning of my life and I am totally a morning person. Like I get up, I have my coffee and then I go, go, go until like seven, eight o'clock at night when I crash in exhaustion on my couch. So I just thought that this would be the kind of thing that would be really cozy to throw on in the mornings when I first get out of bed, before I get ready for work, when I'm having my coffee and having actually worn it now in that very scenario, I can say 100% it is perfect. So this uh, particular design has a three quarter length sleeve to it, which definitely keeps you warm without being like too much now that we're moving into springtime and it's not quite so cold in the house. So it's very, very lightweight, but still cozy, which I think is basically exactly what I'm going for right now. And it's machine washable and dryable, which is really handy. It's kind of annoying sometimes when you have to hang dry clothes, especially, you know, sweatshirts and t-shirts. So I like that this is pretty easy to take care of. The material seems nice. I think the price on this guy was $29.99, which is a little bit expensive, but I also sort of feel like I don't mind spending a little bit more when I'm supporting an indie brand and it's not astronomical by any means. So this guy definitely became a quick favorite. Really, really love that. And then the other piece that I picked out is what I'm wearing right now, which is a t-shirt that says, have courage and be kind, which it's funny, I actually have a little print here somewhere on my book uh, shelf that has this exact same saying on it. So when I saw that they had it in a t-shirt, I was immediately like, yes, I need that. Also, I absolutely love this color. I'm all about the dusty rose. This top I know also comes in a crew neck version instead of the v-neck and in a couple other colors if you aren't into the pink. But yeah, this is very soft, very comfortable. It has a nice loose fit without being baggy is something I definitely am going to get a lot of use out of now that I'm sitting around the house every single day. And this guy, I believe, retailed for $25.99, so a little bit less expensive than the slouchy sweatshirt. So yeah, overall, very positive experience with Thread Tank so far. I honestly want to go and buy like a million more things on their site, but I am trying not to buy a lot of new clothes this year. As you guys know, I was trying to basically thrift like 90% of my clothing purchases. I did allow for a little wiggle room of a few new pieces to be added into my collection, which was why I was willing to accept these shirts from this brand. But yeah, if you are looking for a cute new little shirt to wear while you are stuck in quarantine, uh, maybe you wanna check them out. They did give me a discount code to share with you guys, which is Lauren10 and it saves you 10% on your order. It's not an affiliate code. I don't make any money off of it. Just sharing the love and some discounts if you wanna get um, some cute shirts for yourself. While we're talking about what I'm wearing, you guys have probably seen this necklace a bunch in my videos because I've been wearing it pretty much every single day since I got it. I absolutely love this piece so much. It was sent to me from Missouri. I honestly can't even remember when it was, maybe three, four months ago. It might've been at the end of last year. It might've even been before Christmas. Really, I have no concept of time anymore. But anyway, this is their Lotus necklace and it has become my favorite like new daily piece of jewelry. It's so dainty and so delicate. You can wear it with basically anything and I feel like even though it's a little bit more expensive than like what I would normally spend on jewelry it's not crazy and the quality seems to be so nice. So this guy is $80. It's a gold vermeil necklace. So basically it's gold plated. It's not solid gold, but gold vermeil is a thicker gold plating than traditional gold plating. So it's a little bit more substantial and it lasts longer. This honestly looks exactly the same as it did when I first got it, even though I've worn it for months and months and months, it hasn't tarnished at all. And then these stones I believe are white sapphire, which look very similar to a diamond without having to spend the kind of money that you would spend on diamonds. So this is one of those things where when they reached out to me and were like, hey, we wanna send you a piece of jewelry, pick out something from these options. And I picked this, like I didn't expect to fall as in love with it as I did. But I don't know, I just feel like it's that perfect little accent as someone that is very girly and likes little dainty, delicate details. Like, I just think it's so nice. It's like the easiest thing for me to throw on and not even think about and know that it's just gonna add like 
a little something something to my outfit. And if I wanted to layer this piece with something else, I easily could because it's small, it's yellow gold, and it would go with a bunch of other stuff I have in my you know, jewelry box. So this little piece here, I don't know, it may have me converting to investing in slightly more quality jewelry because honestly, I feel like it's probably worth it to have fewer quality pieces that will last you a longer time than spending a lot of money on cheaper costume jewelry that's going to tarnish after a few months. So in a similar vein, this next thing I wanna talk about is also a little bit bougie, a little bit more expensive than what I would normally spend for this type of product, but I feel like it's worth it because the quality they deliver is like so high. So that's uh, Bijou Candles. So I think back in February, I decided to treat myself to a couple of new ones because it had been, I think, like over a year since I had ordered anything from their website and I just missed having their candles in my life. So I know I've talked about Bijou here on my channel before, but it's been a while. They're a female founded um, indie candle brand and they make these beautifully luxurious, complex scented candles that are just like, they're an experience to burn and they're so beautiful to look at. And they are a little bit pricey, but they use like all soy wax, they use all cotton wicks, they're very clean, you don't have to worry about burning toxic chemicals into your air. And they have so much scent throw, they burn for a really long time, like, to me, if you have the money and you want to invest in like a really high quality candle, they're worth it. So I picked up two candles and uh, one is one of their original votives and then I also got one of their tall votives. So the original size votive, I think these are $29 a piece. I got one of their starlit candles. So they have a couple different collections. They have a coven collection which have witch inspired scents that are super cool. Those have been really popular and they've sold out a whole bunch of times. They have like a Hermione candle and a, a Willow candle. So if you were someone that likes Harry Potter, Buffy, etc., you should definitely check those out. They're really cool and the scents are again just like incredible. And then the Starlet Collection I believe is all inspired by different like old tiny Hollywood starlets. So my personal favorite, I think of all the ones I've tried is Claudette. And this was the very first candle of theirs that I had ever purchased. And I burned through the whole thing. I actually have it sitting back there on my desk. I use it as a brush holder now because the vessels, once you like burn the whole candle, they're way too pretty to throw away. Definitely something that you should repurpose and use in your bathroom or, you know, on a desk, whatnot to hold things. But this scent is just so, beautiful. This to me is like the most classic home fragrance. Like if you want your house to smell expensive and pretty, this, this is the candle that you need in your life. It's white petals is what it's described as and I don't remember the notes so maybe I can like put them up here on the screen for you guys somewhere. But it has this like powdery floral kind of note to it. It's just very expensive and very pretty and fresh smelling. And again, the scent throw on this is incredible. I think these have 70 hours of burn time to them. Like they, they last a really long time and I just don't have enough good things to say about this. The actual uh, vessel itself here is lined in real gold. Like again, bougie AF, but still like nowhere near as expensive as a diptyque candle. So like, if you are someone that has always wanted to treat themselves to something from Diptyque that costs $60, this is a small indie brand that you can support instead and get very similar vibes. And then this other candle that I got is one of their um, tall votives. So I had never tried one of these before. I think these have 90 hours of burn time and they retail for 30 four dollars they're 30 something so they're definitely more expensive than this but they last a very long time and i think that this is from their icon collection which is their newest collection that they launched so i think they have a share candle a stevie candle and then i got the dolly candle which is inspired by dolly parton so this one has notes of peach and lily it's sweet and it's fruity, but it has this like undertone of freshness to it. I think there's notes of grapefruit, if I'm remembering correctly in this. Uh, you definitely do get a little bit of that citrusiness to it to balance it out. So 
it's not like a peach bellini candle from bath and body works that's like in your face very very sweet peach smelling this is much more sophisticated and a little less in your face but oh it's very springy and very pretty i've obviously clearly burned this one already a little bit and i've been really enjoying it a lot also i just oh my god can we talk about the packaging on this with the gold and the pink i think it's so pretty i love the design and this now is available in this size you used to only be able to get this in the tall votive but now they finally made it in the standard votive which i think is really cute it has pink glass instead of the white and has the same design as this one so definitely definitely worth checking out if you again want to splurge on a bougie candle speaking of things that smell good i am still absolutely obsessed with this perfume from Clean. This is their uh, Radiant Nectar scent that they just recently launched. It was like a promotion for Earth Day and they're uh, doing this whole campaign to try to protect endangered bees. So they sent this over to me and uh, I talked about it in I think my February beauty report. And honestly guys, I still love this and wear this all the time. Now, I stopped wearing perfume for a few weeks there because I kind of was in this mindset of like, what's the point? I'm not going to work. No one's going to smell me. But then I saw like a tweet, I think from Jackie Ida, talking about like, do you wear perfume still or not? And it got me thinking like, why, why not wear perfume? Like, sure, maybe the only people that are going to smell it are you or your kids, your significant other, your cat. But like, it's still the kind of thing that can bring you joy and it feels good to know that you smell good even if you're the only one appreciating it and perfume doesn't last forever so like why not in in these times like sometimes it's the little stuff that can go a long way so i started wearing this again and it has really made me happy because this perfume smells so freaking good. It's got notes of pear and ambrette seed and orris butter and a bunch of stuff that I have no idea what it actually is supposed to smell like. Pear, pear was the only thing that I'm like, yes, I, I can understand pear. And you definitely get the pear in this, like it has a very strong fruity quality to it, but it's got a complexity and it's not cloying. It's got this sort of like florally undertone that's just really fresh and super pretty. It's not um, like, a, I don't know how to describe it. It's not like an uppity fragrance. Like it doesn't feel super bougie. Like it feels laid back and casual, but not like a cheap body splash. I don't know. It's just like the perfect thing to wear every day that makes you feel pretty without feeling like you're like trying too hard. And the lasting power on it is amazing. Like you do a couple quick sprays and it lasts for hours. If I spray this on like a sweatshirt or something, I will still be able to smell it the next day if I go to wear it again. It's just bomb. It is like spring in a bottle. I absolutely love it. It sucks that you cannot go to a Sephora store right now to be able to smell this yourself and sample it. But hopefully once these crazy days of quarantine have passed, when you are able to go to a Sephora, do yourself a favor and give this a whiff because it is lovely. Okay, so there are, there are two more things I wanna talk about in today's video. One is a product and the other is a person. So let me show you the uh, product first because this this is the weird one. This is the thing that's like, wh wh why? But but trust me, just, just, just go with me on this. So I bought this uh, scary looking doohickey from Ulta with points when I did like a big points haul a couple of months ago. And this is a brush cleaner. I forget the name of the brand. Again, I will link it for you guys in the description box. But uh, essentially, this is a tool for cleaning your hairbrushes. So it's basically like a mini double-sided rake. So you have on one end these sort of larger, um, you know, bristles, if you will. And this side is good for like generally raking through if you have like a bigger, looser brush, like a wet brush or something where the bristles are like very spread apart and it will help you pull all the hair out. And then you have this really like concentrated side, which is better I think for like a more bristle brush or something with like more densely packed bristles for like really getting in there. Let me tell you, <laughs> this was like the best, well, I guess it wasn't my $12 cause I got it with points, but it was the best $12 worth of points that I probably have spent in 
a very long time. Like, yes, you can use like a comb or something to like get the hair out of your hairbrushes, but this, it's so much easier and it's so much more effective. Also, fun tip, when I was reading the reviews on this, someone suggested to use it to clean the roller part of the floor thing on your vacuum cleaner because if you are a person with lots of hair, like me, you end up uh, clogging up your vacuum cleaner very quickly with all the hair that sheds all over your house. And let me tell you, this thing was like a freaking godsend. I have a new um, vacuum cleaner that I recently bought and I did not realize how like gunked up the roller was with my freaking hair and this helped me get all of it out. It's such a simple, stupid thing and like I'm sure you could probably like DIY something similar, but if you don't want to, if you're planning on buying something from Ulta anyway, this is like a genius little thing to have. Obviously, if you're gonna use it to clean your vacuum cleaner, you probably wanna like clean it before you then go ahead and use it to clean your hairbrushes again. But it seems like the kind of thing that's pretty easy to disinfect and keep clean because it's just plastic and metal. So yeah, brush cleaner, super random, but like so handy. My hairbrushes and my vacuum cleaner have, have never been cleaner. And then finally, the last thing I wanted to share with you guys is a YouTuber favorite, somebody that I've recently discovered and absolutely been loving their videos. So as I mentioned, I have been crafting up a storm in these last couple of weeks. Crafting is something that I used to be really, really into. Like pre-YouTube days, Crafting was my jam. I know how to knit, I know how to crochet, I like to paint, photography, I've done a little bit of like decoupaging, I used to make my own jewelry. Basically like I've got the crafty bug, I really really like to create, I definitely like to do artistic things, and I feel like when I got into YouTube that kind of filled that creative space for me and I just didn't have the time to do all that crafty stuff anymore because filming and editing takes up it takes up a lot of time. But in these last couple of weeks, I feel like a switch kind of flipped in my brain and I just wasn't connecting as much with beauty and makeup and I just felt this like surge of desire to craft again and I've been making baby blankets for my friends and I've been baking a bunch and I decided to like go into my little craft storage space in my basement and bust out all of my paintbrushes and my old watercolor paints that I bought legit when I was like 18, 19 years old. So like 15 years ago. You guys probably are aware, like I absolutely love the whole like watercolor aesthetic and floral designs and things. And it's something that I've always admired so much, like people who can paint these really beautiful floral paintings. And I thought to myself, like, there has to be stuff out there on YouTube, tutorials that I can watch, and I should practice and learn how to do it myself. I have paintbrushes, I've got the paper, I've got the watercolors, they've been sitting unused, collecting dust for years. So I busted them out, I did a little bit of searching on YouTube, and I discovered Shada Campbell, and I have been loving her videos so, so much. She has just like the most calm, soothing presence. She does beautiful, beautiful work. Her tutorials, I feel like, are so easy to follow and easy to digest, and I've just been enjoying them so, so much. So I definitely would recommend if you are curious about learning how to paint or learning how to, um, she does like plan with me. So if you um, were ever interested in getting into bullet journaling and doing like really cool artistic things in your bullet journal, she has a wealth of content over on her channel and I know she also has a Patreon and some other content that you can um, get if you, you know, pay or donate to her channel or like e-courses you can buy because that's kind of like her livelihood. So I just wanted to give her a shout out because she has been helping me get back in touch with my artistic side. And if you haven't been following me on Instagram, now would be a great time to do it because I've been sharing pictures of the stuff that I've been painting over there. So yeah, I think that is about it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed hearing all about all of these <laughs> random products and things that I've been really enjoying lately. If you did, I hope you will consider giving this video a thumbs up. I always really appreciate your support. 
so, so much. And if you're new, I hope you will consider clicking that subscribe button. That way uh, yours truly will show up in your subscription feed and we can hang out together again in the future. I know that life right now is kind of all over the place. It's stressful. It's scary. I'm with you. I'm sending you guys all of my love and positive vibes. I hope that you and your loved ones are staying safe and staying well and staying inside. But it's important. And yeah, let me know if there's anything you guys would like to see from me now that I'm feeling a little bit more in the YouTube spirit. If there's any kind of videos you would like to request, leave it for me in the comments down below. And yeah, on that note, I'm gonna let you guys go, but I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.